Good morning, <coughs> excuse me, and welcome to worship at First Lutheran Church in Greensboro, North Carolina. I am Pastor Emily Lemoyne, one of the pastors here at church. And it's so great to have you join us today from wherever you are worshiping with us from. I have a few announcements I want to bring to your attention, the first of which is something we get so excited about every year. This is our third year for Hope Fest, where we are dancing globally, fighting hunger locally. It is going to be next Sunday, February the 28th, at 3 in the afternoon. There has been a lot of behind-the-scenes work that has been put forth for this. And we have a quick commercial we'd like to promo this with, so let's watch. As you saw there on the screen, all proceeds are going to support A Simple Gesture and Greensboro Urban Ministry. If you would like more information about Hope Fest, there are two places you can go. They have a Facebook page, Hope Fest 4, the number 4. Just search for that and it should pop up. Also, they have a website, hopefest4hunger.org. So if you need more information, please go to those two places. The second thing I wanted to tell you about was our Lenten series that we started on Ash Wednesday. We are moving from our Unraveled series into this series that is entitled Again and Again. And literally, you will hear those two words again and again throughout our series. Because in Lent, we are reminded again and again that suffering and brokenness find us. We doubt again, we lament again, we mess up again. And again and again, the story of Jesus on the cross repeats. Every time lives are taken unjustly, every time the powerful choose corruption and violence, every time individuals forget how to love, and with exacerbation we exclaim, again? How long, O oh Lord? And yet, in the midst of the motion blur chaos of our lives, God offers this sacred refrain. I choose you, I love you, and I will lead you to repair. God breaks the cycle and offers us a new way forward again and again. This theme provides a clear invitation in a time when much seems unclear. And even if we're worshiping apart, we come to God again and again with our prayers and our dreams and our hopes and our doubts. And even from a distance, we will continue to be community to one another, for one another, and with one another, especially when it's hard, by choosing each other over and over again. We will continue to love God with the same persistence that God chooses, claims, and loves us. So we hope that you join us every Sunday and every Wednesday as we continue to explore this theme of God coming into our lives again and again. 
Those are all the announcements I wanted to highlight, but as you know, in your, in your Thursday e-news from last week, there are plenty others, other ways to find that you can get connected in the life and ministry of this church. So please join me in the brief order for confession and forgiveness. Praise and thanks to God, Creator, Lord and Companion, Eternal Source of Forgiveness, Mercy and Grace. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Awaken us to the power of your Holy Spirit that we may receive your forgiveness, confess our sin, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Gracious God, we humbly acknowledge before you and one another that we have turned from your ways and we have struggled with the power of sin by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We turn to you and wish to do better. We trust in your compassion as you promise to forgive us as we renew our promise to follow Christ as our Lord Uphold us by your Spirit, so we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. God is rich in mercy, loves us even when we give in to sin, and makes us alive in union with Christ. By grace, we are made whole. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. May Almighty God strengthen us with the power of the Holy Spirit, so faithfulness to Christ may be our guide. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Have mercy on us, Lord, and hear our solemn prayer. We come to hear your living word. It saves us from despair. Have mercy on us, Christ, and wash us. Let us pray. Holy God, we admit that faith often feels like water in our hands. No matter how hard we try to hold on to it, some of it always slips through. And no matter how tightly we want to hold on to you, we know what it feels like to come up empty-handed. As we gather with you and one another for worship now, Meet us in our hope and in our heartache, in our fear and our joy, in our cupped hands and our clenched fists. Regardless of how we feel and what we believe at any given moment, help us trust that you are here and you love us beyond measure. Gratefully, we pray. Amen. All right, kids, got a special time planned just for you. So let me remove this as easily as I can. It's never easy. <laughs> so glad that you are with us today. This is time for you and me to have just a little moment where we can chat. And I've got some spe something special right here. I'm not sure if you can see it, so I'm going to hold it up. It's a clear bowl, but can you guess what's in it? It's water. I want you to think about water today, especially as our service continues. I want you to listen for when the water is mentioned in our story and in Pastor Jay's message. Water is so important. We're talking about Jesus' baptism today, and I bet if I asked many of you, you would say you had no memory of your own baptism. I know I don't. I was five or six weeks old. No memory way back then. But I also bet if you ask your parents or grandparents or other grown-ups around you who were there that day, I bet they remember your baptism. I know I remember when my two kids were baptized. So later this week, I want you to ask your grown-ups around you about the day that you were baptized, about the water that was poured on your head, about the promises that they made to you, to God. That, that would be a very interesting conversation to have with your parents this week. But I want you to do something special when you come in contact with water. I want you to think about all the times that you touch water in a given day. Maybe when you wake up in the morning, you go in the bathroom and you pour some water, you turn on the faucet and you wash your face. You're pouring water on your face. What about when you're brushing your teeth? And if you're anything like me, sometimes the water will drip down your arm as you're brushing. Water touching us. And nowadays, how many times do you wash your hands in a given day? You go to the sink and you get the soap and you turn on the water to wash your hands. 
Think about at night, maybe when you're getting ready for bed and you take a bath or a shower. I can remember filling the tub up almost to the top so I could lay down and immerse myself in the water, going all the way under the water. So I want you to think about all the times that you touch water, even when you go out and it touches your face when it rains. And I want you to think about how much God loves you and how God has claimed you as God's son or daughter when you touch that water. Maybe even take it and make the sign of the cross on your forehead and ask your parents about those blessings, that, those promises that were made at your baptism. I hope you have fun having those conversations with your grown-ups and remember how much God really loves you when you touch water. Let us pray before our service continues. Dear God, thank you so much for all the water that's around us, water that we play in, water that we wash with, water that falls from the sky and hits our face. Use this this water as ways to remind us how much that you love us and you claim us as your own. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, kids, so much for your time. I look forward to where we can be together again. A reading from the ninth chapter of Genesis. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you, and every living creature that is with you. For all future generations I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth, and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you, and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Here ends the reading. A reading from Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O heart within my heart, in you I place my trust. Let me not feel unworthy. Let not fear rule over me. Yes, may all who open their hearts savor you and bless the earth. Compel me to know your ways, O love. Instruct me upon your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For through you will I know wholeness. I shall reflect your light both day and night. I know of your mercy, blessed one, and of your unconditional love. You have been with me from the beginning. Forgive the many times I have walked away from you, choosing to follow my own will. I seek your guidance once again. I yearn to know your peace. Companion me as I open to your will. You are gracious and just, O spirit of truth, happy to guide those who miss their way. You enjoy teaching all those who are open, all those who choose to live in truth. Your paths are loving and sure, O Holy One, and those who give witness to you through their lives are blessed beyond measure. Here ends the reading. A reading from the third chapter of 1 Peter. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring us to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. Here ends the reading. A 
The Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Lord. John was preaching while baptizing crowds in the wilderness. He said, I baptize you with water, but one is coming who will drench you in God's living spirit. Then Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan River. As Jesus came out of the water that day, he had a vision. Clouds parted and the sky split open. The Spirit of God descended like a dove coming to rest upon him. He also heard a voice from above. You are my child, chosen and marked by my love. You are my pride and joy. He felt compelled by the Spirit to go deeper into the wilderness by himself. There, isolated in a harsh environment for 40 days, he was tempted and tested by the adversary of God. Wild animals kept watch, and angels saw to his basic needs. Next, after John was arrested, Jesus came back into Galilee, proclaiming a message of God's good news and saying, this is the moment we've been waiting for. God's kingdom reign is at hand, right here and right now. Center yourself in trusting this good news completely and let it change your life for good. The good news of God for all people. Praise, Praise to you, you O oh Christ. Christ. Back in the 1990s, there was a series of books that came out with the title Magic Eye. They were picture books of sorts, but with a twist. Every page was a colorful mishmash of shapes and colors, blurry images and objects that were placed closely together, usually in repetitive patterns. At first glance, you could look at the page maybe recognized some of the figures and objects, but my first thought was always, what in the world is this supposed to be? But training my eyes using instructions printed in every book, Magic Eye taught you a technique that revealed an amazing, complex, and beautiful 3D image every time you looked at it in the right way. Instead of looking directly at the image on the page as if our eyes were focused right on that image that was in front of us, the book encourages you to look beyond the page as if you're looking in the distance and look through the image on the page. If you did that, focusing on a point beyond the page itself. With patience and with some practice, an incredible 3D world would emerge in front of you. These beautiful pictures were right there on the page all along, but one had to know and practice with some help from others, usually, what to look for and how to see it. And several pictures frustrated me for quite a while, to the point I thought I'd never see the 3D image. Eventually, I would. And I was always amazed. That image was right there on the page all along. 
Why couldn't I see it more easily when I first looked? On this first Sunday of Lent, as we engage this series called Again and Again, our title today is Again and Again, God Meets Us. So we engage this series, and on this week, we fix our eyes of faith on a very old and popular set of questions. Where is God? How can I see God? And know that God is real. Where can I find God? How do I meet God in everyday life? If the Jesus story tells us anything over and over again, it is that God is a God who is here and now. If we take Jesus seriously, we don't have to wait until we die to finally see God somewhere else. Our reading this morning is the opening act of the Jesus story according to Mark. Scholars believe it is the oldest of the four Gospels in the Christian New Testament. This one-act play from Mark depicts three scenes from the life of Jesus, the very early start of his adult ministry. In the first scene, Jesus visits his cousin John. He's at the Jordan River, and Jesus gets baptized. We recognize from this story that for a time, Jesus was a disciple, a follower of John the baptizer. God shows up in John and John's message in the wilderness, and then in a vision, a daydream, if you will, through the intuition and the imagination of Jesus, who is striving to be faithful to God. In the second scene, Jesus feels compelled to go further into the wilderness alone and dig deeper into his purpose for life. As he does that, he goes on what Native Americans might refer to as a vision quest, discerning God's calling in his life, seeking God's direction and guidance. And God shows up in that context, not only to give Jesus assurance, but God shows up with water and food to sustain him. The story says that some strangers embodied God's message of care for Jesus during those 40 days and nights. In scene three of this first act of Mark's gospel, Jesus goes back to Galilee to begin his work of now preaching and teaching and healing. God shows up in that message that comes from the inspired voice of Jesus, God's guiding presence, the kingdom reign of God is at hand. It's here and it's now. The common thread in all three scenes of this first act Mark's gospel is the nearness of God. The God of Jesus is here and now, who meets Jesus in everyday circumstances and does so again and again and again. So let's think for a little bit about where do we seek God? How do we find God in our daily lives? We may engage in practices and rituals like worship, like Bible reading and study, like conversation about faith with friends, like serving and giving, as well as prayer in all its forms, listening to music that connects us with God. We engage in practices and rituals to help us sense God's presence. Or we may even think, and we find it helpful at times, that these practices and rituals even kind of force God to show up in our busy and chaotic lives. We know we can't dictate that for sure, but it does help us when we take a moment out and focus. But maybe we're sometimes looking too hard. Maybe sometimes we've got our gaze in a place that's just a little off. The grace of this quest to 
see and find God is we hopefully and finally discover something that's a bit of an aha, if you will. And that is, again and again, God seeks us. God meets us. God shows up to remind us that God is always with us. And there is no place that God is not. It's like those magic eye books. That image or picture in 3D is there all along. But it takes some practice and some instruction, some relationship with others, those who have done so before or know what they're looking for. God's there all along, but we somehow forget where and how to cast our gaze at any given moment and how we focus upon God meeting us in daily life. Again and again, we need reminders. I know I do. Much like the sets of instructions in each of those books. So think for a moment. And if you want to close your eyes for a bit, think about where and how God meets us over and over again. A bird sings while we sip a cup of coffee or tea in the morning. A dog greets us with a tail wagging and tongue licking as we walk through the door. Any family pet jumps into our lap for a cuddle. A child or a spouse, a parent or a friend, gives us a kiss and a welcome home or a hug or a sincere goodbye, have a good day, I love you. Sunrise breaks through the trees over the hillside as we take a morning walk. Sunset paints the clouds in the sky with radiant purples and oranges and pinks and blues as stars begin to appear. Owls hoot and crickets chirp, and they sing those summer songs with the cicadas under a moonlit sky. We hear a favorite hymn, a new song, recite a memorized prayer, or read a Bible verse that we never quite heard that way before. Maybe on occasion, an insight comes to us or a story from a sermon hits us in a way that it never did before. Bread and wine or juice are shared with words of remembrance on an altar. Water is, <laughs> excuse me, water is sloshing and maybe a baby cooing or crying combined with giggles from older siblings while words of claim and calling and purpose echo throughout a gathering of people for baptism. Is it up to us to find God or is it enough to watch and be aware of when and how God meets us again and again? Imagine a few more scenarios with me. A parent dresses a wound with a bandage and a kiss. A grandparent makes those cookies or that pie that is just what we needed for a snack. An uncle or an aunt provides that laughter that always brightens up even our gloomiest days. A friend puts an arm on our shoulder and says, We'll get through this. I'm here. The hospice nurse who cares for our loved one who is dying. The surgeon who performed with skill the life-saving procedure on our family member or friend. The tree whose shade cools us off in the summer when the sun is hot and whose fallen branches provide kindling in the fireplace during the winter. The rose bush that pricked us last fall when it was trimmed suddenly bursts forth with twice as many blooms the following spring. 
the honeybees and the bumblebees buzzing around, dancing from flower to flower, spreading pollen and life. The water flowing from our faucets, the electricity obeying our every command at the flip of a switch, the gas that heats our water for showers and laundry, along with all the workers who have provided these services and keep them maintained for us, including after thunderstorms or after several days of freezing rain. The food we buy at the grocery store and the farmer's market, the nourishment it gives us at every meal and the people who make it their duty to make sure that it is planted and grown and harvested and processed and packaged and transported and displayed and sold for us and to us. A stranger who is kind, a hungry person who needs a meal, a homeless family seeking shelter. Obviously, with more time, we could continue that list. And it may never end. The only question we may have as we pay attention, as we become aware, if we live in this awake and faithful state, is simply, where is God not meeting us every single day? Because God continues to meet us again and again. And it all begins, like it did for Jesus, with a promise we hear in the covenant of baptism these words that Jesus heard before he did anything, before he preached a sermon, before he taught any teaching or principle about God and God's kingdom, before he healed anyone, before he did a single thing, before we do or say or attempt or accomplish anything. In sheer grace, first, God meets us where we are wherever and whoever we are, with the same words Jesus heard in his vision that day of his baptism. You are my child, chosen and marked by my love. You are my pride and my joy. As we live life every day with that promise in our hearts, God promises to meet us again and again. Amen. We now take a moment to profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this point in our service, we take a few moments to offer a word of thanks and gratitude for your generosity I want to share with you that through your generosity, we have been able to add new wiring, a new computer, new software, and new video equipment to our traditional worship space. And in the coming weeks, we're going to get it all online. So in the not-so-far future, we will be able to live stream from our traditional space. And we're able to do that because of your generosity in supporting the mission and ministry of this church. The other thing I want to say thank you for is what occurred this past Wednesday. Ash Wednesday, 
is such an important day in the life of the church. It's where we acknowledge our own failings and own mortality. And we had 132 of you that decided to drive through and receive the ashes on your forehead. What an important thing that was for you to be able to experience, as well as me. And I want to give thanks to everyone who made that possible, those here in the building and those of you who came that day. It was so wonderful to look into your eyes as you received your ashes. We've missed you all so much and look forward to when we can be together again. Again, thank you all for your generosity that allows all of this to be possible. Let's join together in the prayers of the people. Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We thank you, Lord, for the abundance of blessings you shower upon us. Forgive us for the many ways we have turned your gifts into our achievements, and in doing so, forgotten your generous presence. Open our eyes to see that everything is a gift of your love and that every gift is to be shared lovingly for your purpose, for your glory. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. God of gentleness, heart of compassion, as we go about our week, help us to see every task as an opportunity to love. Help us to see every encounter as a way to expand your embrace as you meet people and us again and again. Hear us, O oh God, your oh, mercy, mercy is great. O oh, Holy Spirit, Lord and giver of life, in this or in any given moment, we may not sense your presence, and yet Knowing we are in this together, help us to trust that you live within us and you speak and act through us. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. May we remember daily the vivid vision Jesus received at his baptism. And may we continue to make it our own vision for life as well. Let your voice resonate in our bones and throughout our minds and bodies, speaking clearly and boldly to us. You are my child, chosen and marked by my love. You are my pride and joy. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. 
And Lord, let us live with the audacity and the faith and the courage as well to know that we are here to serve your world, to be your body, your life, and your love in action. Show us those neighbors who need us, who need you the most. And may we be willing to offer what we can to do your work, to share your good news, to heal your world. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. We lift up to you those that are on our hearts and minds as we name before you and each other those we wish to pray for, those who have asked for our prayers. Today we pray for Christine, Howard, Catherine, and B, Melissa and Art, Kim, Steve, Charlene, and Bill. We pray for Patricia, Casey, Diane, Donald, Michael, Mary Beth, Elizabeth. We pray for Lou and Bonnie, Tim, Eloise, and Bill. And gracious God, there are other people in our lives you've made us aware of that need your healing touch, your comforting presence, your promise of good news. We take a moment to name them, either silently or out loud. Use us, O oh God, to be your presence, your comfort, your healing. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. According to your steadfast love, O oh God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As we prepare for communion, please make sure you have what elements you would like to use available in front of you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Our Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body that is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. He shared it with all of them, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's life, death, and resurrection as the foundation of our lives. And together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As you share communion among those worshiping with you today or as you take it yourself, remember this is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you.
May the risen presence of our Lord Jesus Christ and the life-giving love of Almighty God, our Creator, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace now and forever. Amen. Amen. As we go about our week, may our mouths speak of God's goodness. May our arms hold those in need. May our feet walk toward justice. May our hearts trust their worth. May our souls dance in God's grace. And may this be our rhythm again and again and again until God's promised day. In the name of the lover, the beloved, and love itself. Amen. We are so grateful for your presence with us as we worship today. Go in peace. Christ is with you.
Thanks be to God.